What's up, guys? It's Sim from We Are Tottenham TV here, and I'm here with your daily World Cup roundups. Let's get right into the action. We started the day of Uruguay versus Egypt. It was a one o'clock kickoff, and it happened to be a really, really scrappy game. It ended Uruguay 1. Uh, Egypt nil with a last minute header from Jose Jimenez from Atletico Madrid. Really scrappy game. I think it was pretty close in parts. I think Uruguay looked really sluggish for most of the game. Luis Suarez had an absolute shocker. He missed. He was he missed a couple of sitters and he looked really really sluggish and just tired, generally tired throughout the game. The only threat Uruguay had really was um, from Edison Cavani, a strike partner who he struck the post from a free kick and he went close with a volley on the edge of the area. A man of the match for me probably was Diego Godin, who I thought was absolutely. The Egyptians looked pretty um, good on the counter-attack, but unfortunately, um, Mohamed Salah was rested from, from injury um, due to his shoulder. He was on the bench. He didn't actually make it into the team, and if he was involved in some of those counter-attacks that Egypt had, maybe they would have come off, but unfortunately, they just they would just look a bit toothless going forward. And it was it was very disappointing from the, from their point of view. They tried to take a risk. They rested they rested Salah for the future games. And unfortunately, because that last minute goal from Jose Jimenez, literally right at the death, 89th minute, it didn't go come through. Now we have a fan cam from Yusuf from Spurs Egypt. Let's see what he's got to say. So uh, obviously a bit disappointed with the final result, um, but we played really well. Um, we surprised ourselves. Everyone thought we'd come out here and maybe get uh, battered by Uruguay. But you know we played really well. If you look around, dominated really by Egypt fans um, and even in the stadium, it felt like we were playing a game in Egypt. Um, it was a great atmosphere. Bit ups, you know, I don't know, I'm really upset, disappointed with the, with the result, but it's given us hope um, that next, next game against Russia, we could actually um, do something. So, yeah. All right, thanks for that, Yusuf. That's what you had to say on the Egypt game. So let's move on to the next game. Morocco versus Iran that this game kicked off at four o'clock. It was another scrappy game, unfortunately, really, really deft of any sort of chances. Um, it was another really scrappy game, really tight. But in the end, of shock of probably the first shock of the World Cup, Iran beat Morocco by a goal to nil. Morocco was kind of a few people's tips to be kind of dark horses in this competition. Maybe not to win it, but to kind of surprise a few people. They have quite good players like Mohamed Benashia from Juventus and Ziachi from Ajax and Busufa. But unfortunately, a last-minute diving header own goal by Ria Budupuz um, gave Iran a 1-0 win. Um, really, really, again, a really scrappy game, a lack of chances. Most of the game wasn't a great watch, just like the first game. Um, but here was my brother, Ben. He was in Oxford. He unfortunately can't make it today to do the roundup, but he watched both of the early games, and here's what he had to say. What's going on, people? Ben, we are Tottenham TV here. Uh, day two of the World Cup. Not such a great day like the first day, but um, from the first game, it was Egypt against Uruguay. Had really high hopes for that one. I thought Uruguay were going to bring it like they always bring it in the World Cup. i tell you what, if they were playing in the England that game, they would have played a lot better than they played today. Luis Suarez was nowhere. He was literally all over the shop today. But I was quite impressed with Edison Cavani. Some nice shots. That little, when he dinked it over the player and had a nice volley. Uh, I thought he play, had a good game actually. But Uruguay, altogether not so good. I thought Egypt played really well, held their shape defensively, really, really solid. Um, and it was a sucker blow for them. I actually felt for them. It was last minute goal from Uruguay and um, and that's what happens if you don't get that goal. You're always uh, looking like you can concede. Moving on to the next game, which was really, really dull game. Iran against Morocco. Morocco historically a kind of a very attacking side, Iran defensive side. In their qualification, they finished top of the group, eight points above South Korea, which would be a surprise to everyone. And they only conceded like two or three goals that whole whole qualification. Um, not many people know about Iran. They think they're just mugs like the Saudis, but they're not. They're actually a good side managed by Carlos Queros from uh, Man United used to be. Um, but yeah, they did in qualifying what they did all, they did in this game what they did all qualifying basically, sat back, and got that late goal, 1-0 to Iran. Um, and the Moroccans will be feeling really upset with that performance because they probably felt that they could have won that game. Uh, moving on, you know, Spain, Portugal. I, unfortunately, I'm not watching that game because I'm in this beautiful palace behind me. Uh, gonna have a good night and we'll see you tomorrow for day three. Come on, England. 
All right, cheers for that, Ben. Just a few thoughts on the Iran um, Rocco for myself. I thought Iran defended quite well. They're known for their stringent defence. They conceded very few goals in qualifying. So you've got to give them credit. A lot of people wrote them off before this game. But given how, you know, Morocco, everyone thought, you know, the quality they have um, against a team like Iran, they would go on to win this game, but they couldn't make their possession count. They had a few chances, but Iran, at the end of the day, they, I, thought, I thought they were the better team just about. They defended well, and they got a bit lucky in their own goal. But we move on to the game of the day, which was Portugal versus Spain. And what a game that was. 3-3 three, three at the end of the day. Ronaldo scoring a hat-trick. Diogo Costa getting a brace. And the other goal going to Nacho Fernandes, the right back, with an absolute wonder strike from 25 yards. What a game this was. An absolute classic. Some people are saying the best ever World Cup group game of all time. Maybe, you know, put your comments below. Let us know what you think if, if if that runs true for you. But what a game this was! Portugal took the lead in the first minute through a Ronaldo penalty after he was stripped in the box in the, in the, in the sorry second minute. Was it a dive? He went there for me. He went down a bit easy, but maybe he was just about clipped. So he was fair enough to go down. Fair enough penalty, but it was a very close call. Um, he and he slotted he slotted it away. Spain equalised around half an hour mark. Diego Costa bullying his way past Pe Pepe, who was absolutely embarrassing in that set of play. He kind of got touched on the face a tiny bit by Costa. went down, and it might, some people argue if he stayed up, he could have prevented the goal. Costa got on his feet, was bamboozling two defenders. He went on his left and jinked back onto his right, slot into the bottom corner. Absolutely sensational stuff by Diego Costa. Um, but right at the, at the end of, of the half, of the first half, Ronaldo picks the ball up on the edge of the box on his left foot. He takes a strike which goes right at De Gea and he he lets it slip through, through his hands and it goes into the bottom corner. Absolute massive howler from David De Gea and Portugal were in dreamland. Ronaldo was second goal of the game. They would go 2-1 up and at the, at, you know, at this stage it was a really open game. You know, all the, they saved all the best action of the World Cup in today for this game because this game was absolutely world class compared to the other two games. It was two and a half time. A really well worked free kick routine from Spain makes it 2 2. A clip to the back post. Busquets um, heads the ball back across the face of goal. And Diego Costa taps home in the centre of the goal. Love, lovely little well worked free kick. And about two minutes later, Spain actually were in the lead. Um, great work from Isco down the left hand side. He kind of loses the ball a bit. But just as the Portugal player is about to clear the ball, you can see Isco kind of diving in and getting, getting his foot on the ball. And it deflects into the part of Nacho Fernandes and he's running onto it right on the edge of the box um, from the right hand side and he hits a really sweet strike across the face of goal into the far corner in off the post one of the goals of the tournament already people are saying <clears throat> that this could be the goal of the tournament who knows but absolutely real real really sweet strike really hit it well from Nacho Fernandes um, to make it 3-2 to Spain and, and it looked like it was going to go that way up until the 89th minute again third late goal of the day um, and who else but Ronaldo winning a free kick on the edge of the box. Now, he hasn't scored, I think I believe it was 54 free kick attempts during his time at our World Cup, but he lined up this free kick, and instead of doing his knuckleball technique that he usually does so often, either goes in the wall or goes over the bar, he actually decided to curl it, because uh, maybe because he was so close to goal, he curls it right into the top corner on the um, on the edge of the D, absolutely sensational free kick and De Gea just didn't move at all he couldn't get near it absolutely sensational strike and equalizing for Portugal making it 3-3 so it means Iran sit top of the group after the second day of the World Cup which is absolutely phenomenal for them who knows what they could do in this World Cup they can get some a result against either Portugal or Spain maybe they can get themselves in the knockout stages looking still unlikely but some stats about Ronaldo he has his 51st career hat-trick and there's only been 51 hat-tricks in the World Cup ever so absolutely ridiculous statistics from Ronaldo he's got three goals of most ever as any anyone has ever scored in at a World Cup was 13 in Justin Fontaine in 1958 so Ronaldo's got three in his first game against Spain so can he beat that? Can he beat 13? It's going to be a big ask, but who knows? Um, but anyway, that was your World Cup roundup. Let us know what you what you think in the comments below. Let us know what, if you think this was the best ever World Cup group game between Spain and Portugal. Let us know if you think Iran have any chance to make it to the knockout stages. And let us know if you think Egypt have a chance of qualifying once Salah is back on the pitch. Thanks for watching, and as always, come on you Spurs! <laughs> Let's go, 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 let's go